hi guys welcome back to my channel guess what we're doing today can you tell that i'm excited guess what we're doing today i'm doing my first official book review on my channel i've never done this before i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> I'm excited can you tell so if you like to hear it here we go wait before you go before we even get started talking about this good book girl make sure or guy girl or guy whoever you are watching this whatever you identify as <laughs> hit the subscribe button like comment I like talking to you guys hello join the family my goal is a thousand subscribers before the end of the year so let's get it so if you like to hear it here we go guys today i am going to be talking to you guys about the yellow wife i read this book during the month of february as you guys know i did do a february tbr and if you didn't know you can go and watch it <laughs> um but the yellow wife wasn't a part of my february tbr but i bought it during february because someone a fellow bookstagrammer was like oh my gosh shelby you have to read it i think you will absolutely love it and she was totally right i flew through this book i maybe read it in two or three days it was so so good so just some trigger warnings um the yellow wife is a slave story um it is it does have some violent scenes um just to be warned in case um you guys don't like reading things like that so before we get into the story i have been in a mood to read slave stories I don't know why um it has just been something that's been on my mind lately um and I usually don't like reading them because um I have enough of my own hurt I don't want to have to read about things that my ancestors went through um to have to carry that stuff with me as well but it's important to know it and I think books like these are super <laughs> important for people to read um because it shows different perspectives and sometimes you'll learn about things like I did reading this book that I had never thought about before um so with that said let's get into what the yellow wife is about so as you can see here first beautiful 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 cover um art for this book i have a thing about books with black women on the cover i automatically want them so sadika johnson you did a very good job with this cover art because it is absolutely beautiful so this book is about a slave that was born on a plantation um in charles city virginia named phoebe dolores brown so phoebe it was promised her freedom by her owner um, who was also her father and push comes to shove and it doesn't happen um her father has a I'm not gonna call it a relationship but he is intimate with her mother very often and takes her mother with him on a business trip and they both don't make it back from the trip so with that said Phoebe is supposed to be um, taking care of her mistress um, who is pregnant and the mistress doesn't like her because the mistress knows that she is that Phoebe is her husband's child um, so her mistress is very very mean to her and we also find out that a guy that um, she likes what is his name why can't I remember his name? Hold on one second. Hold on a second. Do, 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 do. Essex. Essex is his name. So Phoebe has a little boo who is also a slave, Essex. And we find out that the mistress has been forcing herself on him. And she is pregnant with Essex's baby. So all of this is happening really, really quickly. Her mom passes away. Her dad, aka her master, um, her owner, 
is sick and he hasn't come back yet even though we find out later that he passes away and she her and some of the other slaves help Essex run away so he gets away and when they're questioning her about it she says that she doesn't know anything and they kind of get over it easy but then something happens between her and her mistress and they get into an argument um and she like raises her hand at her mistress because her mom has taught her that you are a slave by name not by mind so that is what they call you but that is not who you are you may have a duty here but your mind is your own it's not theirs and another thing that i should say this book very much highlights colorism because because phoebe is a fairer skinned slave she is treated a little bit differently similar to the things that we go through today with lighter skinned black women being treated better um than darker skinned like myself um black women like we don't get that much play although we are all beautiful um fairer skinned black women um or fairer skinned people in all races to be honest um that have a just a dash of melanin are treated a lot better than those that are darker so she knows how to read she knows how to write she also knows how to play the piano because her master's sister taught her and like favored her and she was very much white passing so she raised her hand at her mistress and her mistress was like i got something for you i'm gonna sell you so she sells phoebe and Phoebe has to now experience a whole lot of trauma that she did not experience on the plantation that she was raised in because she was fair skinned and her father played favoritism towards her. So she was a slave, but he treated her better. She had more, um, perks, I guess is what you want to say um to then the rest of them because of who she was because she was white passing so on and so forth so now because she's being sold she's shackled for the first time she's been like she just she goes through all of this stuff excuse me until she gets to the point where they're gonna sell her so she gets to this place called the devil's half acre and the description of the place like reading about that place i was so so angry um it was a jail like people went there to be punished um and they were they were treated so badly they didn't have bathrooms they were fed like old rotten food they were all chained together um women were still having to be sold or whipped or beaten um while they were pregnant causing them to lose their babies it was just so much to read and i i can't it, it i can't help but think about the generational trauma that was passed down from those types of experiences you know and not just from my ancestors and my people but from the whole bit like I know the type of generational trauma that my people have but to think about the people that were dishing this out or the people that had to I'm not even gonna say that they had to stand by and watch it because they could have stopped it if they wanted to there has to be some sort of trauma that they had as well from seeing all of this even though that they thought it was okay because we were only three-fourths human anyway but it just it i'm like i couldn't i couldn't imagine having to live like that or to be treated less than human i, I can't imagine so she gets to this place and they're preparing to sell her and the owner of the devil's half acre decides that he wants her because they in order to sell the slaves they would like put them up on a stage or whatever make them strip and do all of this and she'd never been treated that way before so when they told her to strip she was like no i'm not and he saw her and he wanted her so 
I was nervous <laughs> at first because I was like, is he going to like take Phoebe and like string her up from a tree because she's not listening and she's not complying? Um, but he takes her to some of his other slaves and tells them to feed her and to take care of her. And she finds out that she's pregnant um, with Essex's baby. Um, but she doesn't know where Essex is. Um, so she, he, her new owner, um, who she calls the jailer, I forget what his name is. It don't even matter because I hated him. Um, he starts to treat her better. And for me reading this, I almost forgot that she was white passing. Like, in my mind, she's a slave. Like, I wasn't thinking about her being white passing or anything like that. Um, but long story short, because I don't want to spoil too much of it for you guys, I want you guys to read it. He ends up making her the mistress um, of the house. And this book talks about a part of slavery that I never even considered. Right? So... The rest of the story is about her living as the mistress where the slaves that were there did not like her because now they had to call her miss and to treat her well. But how he didn't treat her much better than the rest of them because she was still his property. Um, she ends up having his kid. She has her son. Um, she ends up having his kid, um, his children, and then Essex is caught and brought there and she has to watch him do terrible things to Essex um and then the story ends I don't want to spoil all of that for you but it 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 is a really 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 good story um it is a really good story but what I really want to talk about is I had never considered what it was like for a slave that is white passing like there is a like a stigma of a like a uh, uh, a house nigga versus a field nigga uh excuse my language <laughs> um and you automatically just assume that oh if you are lighter skinned and you are white passing you just get treated better and it doesn't matter because they didn't have it as hard. But she had it just as hard. Like her her problems may not have been the same as a darker skin slave that was on a different part of a plantation or working as a field hand or whatever the case may be. She may not, their, their lives may not have been identical, but she had a way different set of problems than anybody else did that were just as traumatic like now she has these children and she can't go anywhere like she can't do certain things with her kids she doesn't even really have much say over her household because she's still a slave at the end of the day like he may listen to her sometimes but he he's still her owner she is still a piece of property, let alone the fact that he was, like, raping her every night. Like, it, it just, it opened my eyes to how deep colorism is. And it also made me realize that a lot of the issues that we have, like colorism and so on and so forth, are all from slavery, basically. And I just, I guess I knew that. But I didn't necessarily want to face it. Like, it's not ingrained in us. It's like a part. It's it's a trauma that we gained from other sets of trauma. Like, the layering that is in the trauma. It, it just, it was, it was just so much. But I never thought about, it actually makes me want to research, like, how many um, fairer skin or white passing slaves went through something like this 
and like what was there what was that like because there was another character in the book that was in the same position and it was like she was white passing everyone knew that she was her husband's slave but she was also made the mistress of the house and she was like oh it'll get better like she was like I run most of the business and you know like I do this and there was talk of the the other character she was just like um the other slaves need to respect you or you should sell them and it's just like what like what but at the same time I get it because she's like it's survival of the fittest I have this power I need to use it to my benefit so that I'm protecting me and my children and their legacy and like what my children can and cannot have um there's also a conversation of at the end there's a letter that one of her daughters writes to her and her daughters end up um moving out of the state and moving up north and they're living their lives as white women and I was just like I was kind of torn because you I guess you have to do anything to protect your children because it's do you risk people finding out that they're the children of a slave which then in turn makes them a slave or do you let them live as white passing let them live their lives as, as white women so that they can have an education and they can live a life way better than their mother ever could have so it it's it's an amazing book. It's 272 pages. Um so a fairly quick read. Like I said earlier, I read it in about um 2 to 3 days and it just it is very very thought provoking. Um I loved every second of this book. Um except the the graphic parts that were violent and uh, not that part but just the story the way she chose to tell the story um it's not like any other slave story that I've read before because they are very much usually about an escape of some sort um and this had that in it but it told a different aspect it told a different type of story so I totally think you guys should read this um and let me know what you think if you do with that said if no one is told you today I love you and I will talk to you guys soon bye guys